Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video. And today we're going to talk about Veritas of the Earth, which YouTube commenters have confirmed is a man. I thought it was a man when I first saw him. And then I was like, you know what? I was wrong last week. And this does kind of look like a skirt. And those do kind of look like breasts. Maybe this is a female. It must be a Look at those long legs. This is a female. This is a, this is, no, it's a guy. It's 100% a guy. And it's just hard. I don't know. Something about it, this game right now with people in armor, I can't tell. I'm over my last two on guessing there that's out of the way so veritas of the earth the man bulwark of the battlefield sworn eight earth monk great knight let's take a look at his kit and even though we're not going to have at we're going to have access to him this week it's going to be a bit before you actually are building this guy out because you're going to have to do your guild war guild wars every day and in fact he's coming out in a week where we have limited guild wars and i don't know limited guild wars will be it'll still be going yeah, limited guild wars will still be going. And I think you only get medals in regular guild wars. So it'll push it back even a little bit further. I digress. Here we go. 100 cost, new job. Um, Wang to a shield TMR, which is interesting. This is a unit who can use a shield. 527 HP, 23 defense. Not bad. Now, shields count as armor. So if you're wearing this, it's an armor slot. The buff is 200% chance to ignore fatal, uh, your fatal damage for self. So courage plus single target resist 20. What the heck is it with these Veritas units and just banger TMRs? Now, the problem with this one is if we click on it, how many people can use this thing? Well, Paladins can, Charlotte can. Um, is this Volk? Maybe that's Volk who can and then he can. So that's not Volk. I don't know what uh, is that? It's hard for me to tell. It's on the JP site too. So getting around is difficult for me. In fact, I got to refresh just because I checked that thing out and retranslate everything again. But anyway, it's a good TMR. If you have a character that can use it, Courage and 20 single target resist is a hell of a TMR buff. So that is wonderful. Just very limited in who can run it. But some of the older paladins in the game might just like that. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the stats. Now, I'm thinking this is a slow boy and you'd be right. 63 agility. There's no um, dream enhance but yet uh, it's obviously a brand new unit you don't even have a limit break on this thing yet so it's a slow roll right just like the other veritas units are it's out in the game you start building the metals and you play the long game with it but you do get that nice tmr early and i, I don't know that thing's kind of sexy for a guy for a guy unit it's a sexy tmr i'm not trying to get confused again over here game what are you doing to me what is happening anyway support abilities okay the secrets of the earth hp defense aggro up by five and debuff effect weakening down 15. solid right tanky stats right there and again it's another unit who just there seems to be and maybe this is just me Units are veering very heavily, not just tanks, like all units in this game seem to be either like very anti-physical or very anti-magic. Now, sure, you catch some of them that can like do all of it, and those are the greatest units ever, but this guy definitely leaning anti-physical right there. And then I really like Devotion to the Devil. This is his second new support ability. It's just four elemental resist up 20%. Earth, Lightning, Light, and Dark. So the earth lightning kind of counter elements right there. And then light and dark, not counter elements, but you know what I mean. So 20% to four different resists on a tank. I think that's pretty solid. Now you do have the um, secret of hitting, which will give you attack and strike attack. You could also go attack and defense pin if you want to do a little bit more damage. Or yeah, you could go some resistances, but I think you might most of the time just run his two new support abilities. That's neat. That's neat. That's a new thing he has. Okay, counter moves. Now. It's a slash and strike only counter, but it's a 70% proc chance and it'll reduce the damage by 40%. Really good. So if you can find a slashing or striking team, you have a pretty decent chance of just reducing all the damage he's going to take. And he has a lot of other ways to reduce that damage as well, as we will see. Guard Smite. This is his cheat move. It is a very small range, but it does also give him 20 defense for three turns after he does it. So once again, leading into that anti-physical thing that he's got going on give himself defense up for three turns steel wall this is a self only buff reduces physical damage taken by 7500 hp flat hp shields are awesome 
They are just awesome. That's an awesome thing that he gets. Then he gets CT up when his HP drops below 50%. He gets protect and he does get shell as well for a little bit more anti-magic in case your team you're fighting has a major two on it. That shell will be nice. Overall, really powerful self buff. Then you have defense barrier that upgrades to that. This gives him eight aggro, so eight chance of being targeted. It's that, again, that like honeycomb type distance based barrier where you're going to get a 10% um, 10 up to 10% damage reduction right here on physical and magic. So he can mitigate both that way as well. And then he will give a friendly unit damage reduction when they're in range as well. And this was one of the moves. And if we go back here for a second, this was one of the moves that was previewed in the game tempered barrier and you can see maximum six panels and it also bestows that damage reduction to allies so that's something he has going for him i think these are really cool like it, it tanks forever in war of the visions were a unit that you just wanted to like send like you would quicken them sometimes you'd be like just go get them go get as far away from the rest of my team as possible giving them this ability to kind of help cover damage for their teammates is very very nice so i like that a lot then you have mantle fort right here this is a this is interesting that he has both of these so mantle fort increases chance of being targeted by eight only when hp is below 50 percent for self this is or eight sorry it's up to 12. this is important because it's different than this and skills in war of the visions that read different often stack with each other if the wording was the same and i'm assuming war of the visions like or woad of calc has these calculations and like translations done kind of right if the wording was the same it wouldn't stack they just override each other so like it's fine but it would be not as good. But here, I think you'll get eight here. And then when his HP drops below 50%, you'll get 12 more aggro, which is cool. 40 defense for three turns when his HP drops below 50%. Critical evasion 50 for three turns when his HP drops below 50%. AOE resist 25 for three turns when his HP drops below 50%. And restore HP by 50% when HP drops below 50%. So how does that actually work? Well, what it does is this. You get knocked below 50%, you get three turns worth of buffs, and then you heal. Cool. So you, you kind of, it's like you know how some units, they die, and when they re-raise, they have a bunch of steroids. Take like Balo, right? He gets all those steroids after he re-raises. Your man here just gets dropped below 50%, heals, and gets the steroids. So that's pretty neat. Okay, Crag Bash, 165% damage. Notice it's striking damage. So this man is shield fist. He's going to have a shield and punch people. 165% um, damage gives decreased defense pin 30 for the target. It does hit in a nice little rectangle based AOE. And it's again leaning into his anti-physical by turning off defense pin on a unit that can stack a bunch of defense. Then Geo Demolition. This will dispel auto revive for the targets. That's really the reason why you're using this. Can't hit floating people with it. 200% damage modifier. And it's a three hit attack, which that's a nice little thing for PVE if you don't have other PVE, like better chaining units. Okay, Deep Crack. 165% mod. This is, you'll have to run a sub job to get this. It will decrease attack and magic on the target. And then he has a diamond shaped group buff that increases debuff resist for attack, magic, defense, spirit, and all resist types by 100 for allies. So making them undebuffable in all of those areas interesting but i think his self buffs are just so good you'll want to run them instead okay monk will give you a little bit more striking damage with a um 100 hit chance on there and chakra like chakra the surprisingly really strong heal but you want this dude out there tanking and then great knight will give you access to some slashing moves a couple more striking moves and um a stun a chance to stun that dispels protect and like maybe that'll be a thing you also do have don't sleep on this for pve again you do have a multi-hit attack that knocks earth resist down it's striking that's something you could find use of that and then no limit break at the bottom of the page because our man doesn't have a limit break yet even in jp which means it will be a while for us before he gets one in global still this is now what what this means for the game going forward in the immediate future is you're not going to want to have your proxy play on as much right so like me for example i just constantly have proxy on and then some days okay yesterday though one of my guild sub leaders yeeted my team into the enemy and wiped me today i'm removing proxy play boom not gonna get me today are you but i'm not mad at that man because ashaman's a god and um i will use his strategies to do well in 
in guild raids. Okay, there's only a few teams left. My team is clearly anti-water. I'm hoping that this person right here is very much like this person right here. So let's go see if my Squall Lightning Boys, well, I say Squall Lightning Boys, Squall, biggest friend Balo, and Lightning Waifu Lightning can go take down a mono water team, or if I run into a great sword team, which can be a problem. I was really hoping for some Squall dominance in this limited guild wars, and uh, Squall did really well on the first day, got five stars and two attacks against one of our toughest matchups. And then yesterday, well, I didn't even get to play. I only got one star yesterday, but I don't blame myself. Not at all. Did I build the team? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. But is it my fault? Hell no. It, that, that's life. Right? Blame other people for things. Obviously. Every time. Is it your fault? Is there any way you could possibly shift that blame? Do it. Do it. Okay. Is there any way we could load faster? No. No. That would just be too nice. I'm a little worried that the loading time is so long because oftentimes loading times mean longer fights. And I feel like if this was a mono water team, we would not be in for a long fight. We would just wipe them. Let's find out. So enemy is... Um, okay, yeah, it's the Great Swords with Valade team. This team is the team that beat me yesterday. So let's see if I can get a little redemption if it's me playing the fight and not somebody on my team. We'll turn ability effects on to make things look a little nicer. Boom, get my haste online. Now, for my comp to work, Squall is going to reapply his haste again going down the line. So I need to lap him right there. Squall is going to... No, she ran out of range. So he'll do force barrier. Good, I adjusted that. I'd, I'd wondered if I'd made that adjustment or not. The problem here is this, this team has such like strong AoEs and Balo won't get out far enough to like be tanking everything early. Really good damage coming out from lightning to start things off right there. Balo gets his buff and moves out. But notice how we're just all kind of grouped. Grouped. And then even though this will kill her, oh my God, it didn't even kill her. And he had smile practice. Okay, so trouble because that hurts. The Rendon Men for big damage and the repair. But lightning laps everybody. Dispel spread comes out. Follow up attack. Boom. Shoot her. Boom. Shoot her. Boom. Still didn't proc it. We're that close, guys. We're that close. Squall lived and it's his turn. So Squall, big AOE damage. Kill everybody. Oh, and Balo's back. Come on, this is, this is a tight fight. This is what I was worried about. I didn't want a tight fight. Whining Blade. Okay, we kill Valade, but we don't kill the other Trinity Burst. Take him out, Balo. Let's go. She had re-raise. She kills our whole team. She kills our whole team. Nope. She doesn't kill anybody. She does heal Joom. And you can see how her healing has been like exactly enough to be super annoying the whole time. All right, Lightning, come on. Get him with the summon. Get him with the summon, Lightning. I'm not sure the summon was the best play here, but she might have been out of AP. I couldn't see. Either. This is a really hype fight. Boom. Yeah, she only had 15 AP. Follow-up attack on a summon. Is that a thing? Yep. Still, Joom keeps living with, and we ran out of follow-up attacks. Now, but what do we, do we get lapped? We get lapped, but she just has auto attacks. GG, baby. I was never worried about it. Not for a second did I think I would lose that fight. Not for a second. I had such confidence the entire time the entire time no doubt in my mind i was gonna win that fight i'm happy i recorded that and you know what if i'd have lost i just cut that whole segment out of the video nah i've wiped enough times life now is there something i can clean up we're just having fun at the end of this thing is there something i can clean up right here does lightning win this 1v1 hell yeah lightning wins this right right she gonna outrange her take her down right I think so. Either way, we're going to find out. Do we get another 27 minute loading screen in a 40% HP versus 40% HP 1v1? We shouldn't. Now, I think Lightning still has haste, right? So I should get hasted. Yeah, there that is. I will turn, let's turn ability effects back on so we can see Lightning pull out the gun. We always want to see that. So turn that off. Here we go. Okay, ready to pursue. We need that follow up attack. She's going to move in. I need to be in range to shoot this turn. Boom. Life Siphon pops the Courage. Follow-up attack takes her down. That was the designed outcome. That's how I wanted that to happen. And it was so close to happening on my, like, opening few turns in the last fight. But A2's little Rend and Mend just crushes my dreams, man. It crushes them. But still, we got uh, we have four stars today. That's a good bounce back day for the squad. Limited Guild Wars is going good. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Peace.